So this is the device, the pull mechanism after it's been removed from the air tube. I'm replacing this because of the string wearing out. Probably the important thing to note is the, the order of devices. I've got a pulley in here that protects that from hitting. And then I have the pulley, then the guard, then the handle. Good idea to note that before you take it all to bits. Now I'm going to take away the actual mechanism. This thing in the middle is called a circuit. And you get a special pair of pliers. It's called circuit pliers, which work to just separate that mechanism to pull them apart. And that's what we'll use. Now we're using a pair of circuit pliers, such as these ones here. Push them into the hole. Push just to separate them out, just like that, and the ring just comes freely out. It's a matter of loosening up the spring with just a flat bladed screwdriver, applying pressure around the edges, slowly prising it up. Well, this circlet here has no holes and can be just be removed by pulling backwards. from the we should be now be able to remove the mechanism. And it should get to where the twine is. That was the spring just letting go. And there it is there. the bit that needs replacing because of wear and tear on that cable there. It's basically going to snap at an inconvenient time. So under here we still have all the spring mechanism which we'll work on how to load after we've done a bit of a clean. This is the cable itself wrapped around the spool. If we look in the centre here we'll see that it's actually bound in here if I can find it in the middle of the film. Yeah, it's actually bound in here, let's put it down, by this mechanism here which is just a wedge with teeth on it and it just pulls it Pulls the rope, so the rope end is there, doesn't go any further, but it's kept in there by this wedge into the hole. So, if on the other side, you can see there, and by just knocking that out with a tool, just a gentle, you should be able to dislodge that wedge mechanism. So you can see the whole wedge piece, lifting it up. And that's the mechanism that bites into the rope. There's it gone. That's the mechanism that bites into the rope and is what holds it. There, so it goes in there, pulls against the rope and bites. This is how we put it all back together. We've found a piece of line, we've sealed the ends so it won't fray. Just keep it very thin in line with the rope so it doesn't get too blobby at the end so it's easy to pass through holes. The mechanism is that we put this device back on. Here's the exit hole here. That's where we're going to pull from. And if we move this around, we'll feel it drop down. And if you rotate it, you'll feel a point where it starts to to pull. Okay, what we need from there 
it's basically five rotations. So this is the direction of pull, this way, anti-clockwise as we're looking down. And what we need to do is load it with five full rotations. So one, two, three, might need other hands at the stage, four, and one more to come round is five, and we want to end up with these right and left pointing basically in line with the hole, the exit hole, which is here. So what I do now is I take my string, as I insert it down through the hole, give it a wiggle and a jiggle, and it should appear there. Okay, now it's a matter of reintroducing that wedge, which is there. And I want the wedge to sit so that uh, as the string gets pulled, it'll bite into it. So the direction I want is this end with the short end facing the R. So what I'll do is I'll just push that in there. So as that pulls, the teeth will bite into the string. Now I might just push that string just so it's poking out the other side so that when I pull the mechanism it um, it'll actually bite. I want it to bite into the string, I don't want it to come loose. <coughs> so you could give it a little nudge with a screwdriver if you need to just to push it into there to, to bite. But basically that's the mechanism you're looking at there to bite. So give it a good tug with the string. <coughs> There's no point going through all this effort and having it loose. And now if we release that, it should test it right up to where the handle comes back in. So I'll just keep my finger on that knot at the moment. I don't want it to. So just to test it. Full range you'll be needing. Okay, so now is a good time to reassess the um, the order of things before you tie off on the handle. I've got a rubber washer type thing designed to protect the neck or the opening of to the uh, thing from getting struck by the pulley as I drop it off when I'm doing manual. Then I have the cover to the handle, end of the rope, which goes into the handle, and there it goes, again I've melted that with a bit of nylon, let's pull it through, maybe with a pair of pliers, I'm going to find a pair of pliers, I'm going to do my knot. You don't want to have slipping on you. The knot we use is uh, called a stop em knot. I'm not a boy scout, but this is how I believe it's done. You just pass it through. Right. I don't know if it comes in here, it's clear on zoom. Pass it through once and bring it around again for a second time. Pull up the slack. There's double loops on the side. And they're really tight. And there it is. And there. And just a matter of pulling that into your handle. Pushing it down wherever you feel. Settle the knot into there and bring up the handle. Okay, so just to test everything. And before I reassemble everything, I'll just check that everything extends and retracts. 
So this is the section on reassembling the mechanism. Again, it should all be settling down there so there's very little rock. The uh, piece there just goes back with that hole in there. Freely moves. Next piece is sitting here. And you know if you've done it right because sitting right at this level here should be accessed directly to that groove. Okay, and um, zoom in. This is on the side here. A groove. And if this, all this has been established in the correct order, it should be exactly level at this point right here for the circlip to go on. Okay, so you can tell you've got it at the right height of those grooves. Uh, that groove is visible, flat with the top of the white ring. Next trick is to put back on the circlip, and the important thing is to make sure these three tabs, one, two, and three, are slotted in to that groove. Put it there. Let me use the screwdriver to force it across. Checking that on one side, two sides, and also at the back there, that's all in the groove that's on that center thing. This is putting the screw, uh, the spring mechanism back onto the device, and really the device needs to fit with the upwards protrusion of the spring facing upwards and it'll fit there and so it goes so it's facing upwards just use the screwdriver if you haven't got the right equipment just to tap it down on either side So the three reference points are the white protrusion disc, the center core, and this lip is where it catches. So a lip there, and on that occasion I actually had to pull this around to get that final positioning. But it is in there now. down the final thing is to put up put back on the uh, circlip you, um, yeah the circlip into that top ridge which should be visible just above the top of the last layer of the spring so get the circuit pliers out and apply it now the final step once this is all down and you can see that top groove in here is to that's the groove where the last uh, circlip needs to go now and the last step is to put on that circlip. So this is a very delicate piece of um, metal. So I need to have a technique of sort of sliding over, prying it open just a little bit using the pliers. I just want to looking for a little bit of a little, little bit of give in it as you slide it over. So if you slide it on one side. Reefing it open wide, you just have to make sure it's in that groove down the bottom, because it all the way around, and the ends are nice and snug and it's not going anywhere. Right. It's all ready to be put back on the machine.